Okay, welcome to the Sumer Sports Show. We have some new faces here today. I'm Eric Eager. I'm one of the VPs at Sumer Sports. I am joined, as I usually am now on Mondays, uh, with Thomas being out the last few weeks, by Parker Fleming, one of the, the great data scientists at Sumer Sports. I'm also joined by Udit Ranazaria, a deep learning engineer at Sumer Sports, formerly of the Cleveland Browns. And because I said that because Sean is repping one of the teams, Sean Clement, one of the VPs at Sumer Sports, is repping one of the teams he used to work for, the Cincinnati Reds, my former hometown, Cincinnati Reds. It's also uh, worked for the Miami Dolphins and, and, and the Baltimore Ravens. How, how's everybody doing today? Doing great. Can't Uda, are you good. ready to, to sort of show us up here? Or we did, did we lose Uda already? Man, Can you hear me? We got him. This yeah, yeah. podcast is going to be heater. If the technical difficulties we've experienced over the last five minutes are any indication, this should be chaotic and uh, and very fun. But absolutely, that's, yeah, that's the thing. Like, we, we, yeah, we do have to be. A, yeah, we do have to. You know, expectations. We had to put them. This is the first time we've done a four-person one. Um, but to get everybody up to speed, we are doing another Monday draft. So two weeks ago. Uh, Tay Seth, who's on vacation, Parker Foaming and myself took quarterbacks for the next five years. And then uh, last week, Tay and Parker and I took head coaches. Now the four of us are going to draft non-quarterbacks. The rule is the next you're drafting them for the next five years, including, you know, contract is, is, is a part of it, right? So age, contract, all of that uh, is part of the objective here. So um, we are going to take non-quarterbacks, which is going to be fun. It's going to show some of the values that every one of us has and some of our evaluations that we have of some players. So uh, I can't wait to do this. Parker, you drew the numbers here. Uh, I believe Udit is going first. I'm going second. And, and then Parker, remind me because my... Uh, um, yeah, we're going. Uh, it's it's Udit, you, me, and then Sean. And despite okay, what people think, I didn't I didn't, didn't rig the numbers draft. to get Sean to go last. So, so we we do we are doing a snake draft. So Sean's gonna be able to pick at the turn, and then Udit will pick at the other turns. We are going to do six rounds here. So we're gonna get six non quarterbacks. So twenty four non quarterbacks in total. These are the by Sumer Sports the twenty four most valuable non quarterbacks in. All of the NFL. That's that's what all the aggregator sites can can uh, can can conclude here uh, after today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with Mr. Ron Azari himself over here. Uda, what do you got? Yeah. So as I was starting to prep, you know, like a whole one hour ago, um, it kind of became pretty clear who number one I think uh, was gonna be for me. I think it's gonna be Michael Parsons. Um, there aren't that many edge defenders that I think are. Uh, uh, extremely good and cheap right now. Um, I think Michael Parsons really stands out in the crowd in that way. Um, I'm really glad they're moving him to all-time edge in the upcoming year. I think that is his uh, most valuable position by far, and that actually makes it way easier to take him, right? I don't want him wasting snaps at off-ball linebacker, um, where I would say he can't use his athletic abilities to the best of, you know, uh, I guess what's relatively easy is just get to the quarterback. Um you know, I don't watch, maybe our, my eyes aren't particularly trained, but I've seen him chase down Mahomes, and I've seen him do crazy stuff, um, and a lot of the film watching community seems to love him. Um, some of our internal metrics have him as, like, a top three edge, and that doesn't adjust for his age, and then we're expecting a lot of growth and development um, as we move forward. So, for me, it's going to be Michael Parsons. That's a that's a good one. I think it's supported internally. By the way, uh, Udit's talking about some of the, the models that he and, and, and others in – uh, in our group is our, our building. One of the things that I really liked about Micah Parsons too was like when he was an off-ball linebacker, he was actually very good at it. And, you know, he didn't bite on play action a ton. And, and but to your point, like he is when you rush from depth, right? When you blitz, it's just easier. You have better rates. And so, um, you know, a defense, especially like a weak link defense, should be such that every player has an assignment hard enough for them to perform at a certain level. And so what you don't want is one of your brilliant players performing an easy task. You want them performing a hard task so that it trickles down to some of the weaker players uh, on your team. Folks, would you, let, let's let's at least like talk about this for... Uh oh, Do we lose him? Yeah, I mean, I think what he was gonna say. Um, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead, dude. 
No, I was going to say, I think what he was going to say is that let's talk about this pick. So I'd, I'd love to hear what you both think. I would have, uh, I would have bullied you if it not had been Micah Parsons first overall, I think in terms of non-quarterbacks accounting for age, counting for team control. Uh, I, I yeah, um, uh, this is, this is the obvious first pick, I think. So uh, good, good, good job doing uh, the right thing <laughs> to start out here. Okay. Um, I, I did. Eric back. I did not. Have back. I don't know what happened to my, my internet like glitched for like a moment in time there. I might have to, uh, you know, my my wife has somehow figured out to put my office in like the wor- like maybe the worst spot of every single house we've been in. That is just a joke. Um, okay, all right. My pick at second overall. This is a player who is entering year four. He is like a few hundred yards away from having more receiving yards than any Bears receiver in history. Uh, he's just. I mean, he's absolutely amazing. I mean, he can make Kirk Cousins uh, look like. A- I think that we're having Wi-Fi issues again. I'm going to go ahead and infer that Eric's going to pick Justin Jefferson here. Is that is that where we're going? Yeah, he said Kirk Cousins. He made Kirk Cousins look good. That's what I heard. So, so I, Justin Jefferson, Minnesota Vikings. If I'm back. Here. Yes. Yes. You're very. Back. Uh, very good. Very good pick there. Um, and I think yeah, I think I that know. was. I think that was the safest. Like if we had placed odds on how the first round was going to go, like. You could have put your mortgage on on Eric taking Justin Jefferson. That that was a shoe in. Well, all I did in the quarterback draft a couple of weeks ago was try to get Eric to uh, um, to draft Kirk Cousins. I was like, how can I get these circumstances where Eric can just like has to take Cousins? But couldn't do it. It was too great of a task. Uh, Jefferson, I think uh, I think Parsons and Jefferson going here. One like we're going to go young. I think that's just going to happen with. Um, uh, how valuable these guys are knowing that we're looking for like the next five years. You want somebody young, the extensions aren't going to be a problem. And uh, I mean, Jefferson, Eric, I think is good for one, the absolute ceiling of any average quarterback. He will make that average quarterback better to any other wide receiver you have on your team. Jefferson's going to attract so much attention, so much gravity that he's going to be, um, uh, you know, just a complete disruptor for defenses. And that frees up your other guys, takes the pressure off them. So I think this is an excellent pick um, and, and almost could be one, one B behind, Parsons uh, overall. Yeah, I think there's only two players in the maybe, maybe it's a third, but like I think they're Michael Parsons and uh, Justin Jefferson can be the best at their position, arguably, and they're on like their second or third year in the NFL, which I think makes a big difference. Yeah, I think I think coming up for an extension soon is rough, but at so, like I think actually in his case, earlier the better for the extension because I think early on it's probably a zero surplus, and then later on it's probably a better one. Um, for them, I also think, you know, we are like drafting them onto an average team. And our assumption is that the players that we don't pick among our six, so the other 47 are all going to be average players. I think you really want that boon there. Wide receiver is a rare position, I think, where it's usually about depth. But for a handful of players, it's about, you know, that's that super like elite type player. Yeah, absolutely want to go have to have to go ceiling with the wide receivers there. Uh, so just Justin Jefferson is the second pick. I'm going to go third. And this is where I think things are going to go off the rails, uh, as has happened in the last couple of drafts. Um, I think you got to think about positional importance. you got to think about uncertainty. you got to think about what type of players you can get on the open market, what type of players you can't. Um, and I think that I have to prioritize uh, offensive tackle. And I think I have to prioritize youth here. I'm going Tristan Wirfs uh, a couple years in couple years of contract control back the dude can power clean 450 or something ridiculous i've seen the videos really really high graded out uh on, on metrics there i think the anchor of my team i'm going i'm going tristan worse as my first pick overall uh number three. First tackle off the board in the first round i i love it i'm building the dynasty man long long I mean, long term here but the thing about weakling systems like offensive line like now are all of parker's picks going to be offensive line because like you can't have a weak spot. Can't have an average center. Uh, the are you concerned at all about the fact that he's mostly been right tackle, or is that something like did he show left tackle ability at Iowa? I can't remember that. Um, at uh, I believe that he could play left tackle. I think that uh, at, at at Iowa he was able to play both positions. I, if I if I'm recalling correctly, it's been a couple of years now. They had an injury and he moved around to like make it easier, like. Somebody got hurt and they moved a couple positions and they were like, Tristan, you're the only one that, that hasn't played 
or that has played all these positions and moved him a little bit. So versatility there, but I think slot in at left tackle um, and uh, and can can anchor the the offensive line. I, I like that a lot. I think yeah, this is a good pick. All right, so I get two here. Do you want me to drop them both and and then and then hit me with your rebuttals or one at a time? I think you should be given. I think you should be given the benefit of feedback that all of us have been given on our first pick, and give us the first pick. We'll roast you, and then we'll get your second pick, and you might change it based on how much we roast you. Uh, Well, no man will call me a coward. Uh, I'm going to take Jamar Chase as my first pick. Um, So you you uh, satisfied this person, Ollie Karen, who says I did. That's what that was for you, Ollie. Uh, You know, I will not let my my Baltimore background. you know, show me as as a as a hater uh, of Jamar Chase. He's excellent wide receiver, still very young, uh, have a little bit of rookie contract control left. But if my quarterback is average, by God, I need somebody excellent in the wide receiving core. I don't I don't dislike that at all. Chase is one of one of the more. I mean, Chase completely obliterated the tackle versus wide receiver argument that we were all having, and like we were all drawing pictures in the spring of 2021 and he obliterated that it was a very good example for the the right answer uh it was a terrific acquisition by the Bengals franchise changing guys so hard to hard to argue with it for sure what's your uh, what's your second pick Sean all right second overall pick uh I am going to uh I'm gonna show some love for the Miami Dolphins here and replicate their build with a selection of Jalen Waddle. That is the first pick of the second round. So I'm going for, with a one-two punch of very young, highly talented, fast wide receivers. Um, and I think between those two can cause a lot of problems for some defenses. So the first five picks, we have a pass rusher, a pass protector, and three wide receivers. I think that that's kind of the analytics way to go. What it, what it, I, What do people think there? Yeah, well, I kind of love Parker's pick of going tackle because, like, you know, if you could get probably the best, uh, you could probably get the best entire offensive line built before you really have any competition for offensive line, just based off of how, like, the rest of us are probably going to pick. I thought about doing something similar with coverage, but I was not certain enough in my in my picks to to roll with it. I. Love love to hear you say that because not to spoil, uh, that's exactly how I thought this would go. Is that wide receiver heavy? <laughs> and so I think there's a logical pick for me here at, at what this is pick six now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that given that a couple great wide receivers have gone off the board, given I think there's a little bit of a jump to that next level of wide receiver, I'm gonna go with lockdown guy. I'm gonna take Sauce Gardner here uh, and get that elite that elite lockdown cornerback. Uh, you know, one of the highest graded players. Uh, consistently, I think his, um, there were concerns coming out of college about his target share. Like I think the stat leading up to the draft was he had never allowed a touchdown in college. And I was like, yeah, because no one throws at him because their other cornerback is not anywhere as good, but that has, um, you know, he's, he's obviously the guy, I think one of the best cornerbacks really, really young, got some team control. And, uh, and, uh, in the same way that Tristan Wirfs is going to anchor the offensive line, I'm going to set my entire defense based on having this lockdown corner with sauce Gardner there. You, uh, you erasure of mama mentality, Kobe Bryant on the other side of <laughs> Sauce Gardner in Cincinnati. Um, Seahawk uh, legend, right? Seahawk now. legend. There we go. Yeah. yeah. He may be on my draft board. He may be. I, I, look, Gardner is great. Do you, have, do you get concerned, Parker, that he's not, he's like a one side of the field kind of corner, or, you know, he's not like a Jalen Ramsey. And again, those guys are older. So it's, it, you know, but like, let's say there was somebody coming up who was more of a Ramsey Humphrey um, kind of guy who could kind of play that middle of the field part and play outside. Whereas Gardner so far has only shown an ability um, to, to play on the outside. Not to um, uh, Colin. Yes. Good question. It is a five-year exercise, which is why I went tackle first. Cause again, uh, they are, and, and the same thing with cornerbacks here. Um I, I, you know, not to sound too Rumsfeldian, but there are known knowns and known unknowns, right? On the, college, on, on the football field. And one of the known knowns is that Gardner is going to be excellent in a very specific role. Having him and having the certainty taken out of that, I can build around him, I think, uh, a little bit more comfortably than perhaps someone where I'd have to consider fit for this second cornerback position a little bit more there. 
Yeah, and speaking of the same thing, my first pick, Justin Jefferson, played just two outside snaps his senior year, or last year at LSU. Everybody thought he was just a slot, but it was really just because he played with Jamar Chase, uh, uh, <laughs> who's the guy from uh, the Panthers, um, Terrace Marshall, et cetera. That wasn't because he couldn't do it. Uh, it's a good point, Parker. Okay, I feel like this is an easy one for me. I go wide receiver. I go another premium position. This is, this, you know, Miles Garrett is still really, really young. He's athletic as all get out. He's kind of on like the tail end. He's kind of in the middle of a contract where now he's still a surplus. And for my money, he's probably the most talented pass rusher in all of football right now. So, you know, if you take out Parsons, I, I think Parsons is probably rightfully because of versatility and stuff. Like if your team gets in a bind, he can play out off the ball linebacker. You know, Garrett can't. Um, but Garrett, I think right now is probably the premier path, premier at pure edge player in football. So I'm going to go ahead, Miles Garrett here. So Eric, so my question for a pick like this is, even though I agree with everything, he's a, probably one of the top three edge rushers in the NFL. He's still pretty young, but he's paid, right? So you know, I think it's something me and you actually go back and forth a lot with regards to what we're doing. Sumer is how much surplus value can even the best player at a position provide, you know, like there's so many players available on the board right now that have two years of cost control left. And where, where do you find, how do you, how do you make that equation work in your head? Well, I, I just think it's, I just think you have the consistency of Garrett other than the year that he like beat uh, Mason Rudolph in the head with his helmet. <laughs> like you really haven't had like any fall off in play. Um it, it consistently when you, you, you took the, like any metric you use, whether it's like PFF pass risk grade, it's like, I'm buying certainty here. And like, even if the surplus is like 10, I feel like the surplus value is at a floor of like five to 10 million. And, and in a team where like, let's say the Browns actually end up being good and they get a ton of pass rush uh, opportunities this year because they haven't had a great record for a couple of years now. Like we might even see that the fruits of that labor even generated more. So I, it's a good question. And, and I think it's a fair one to say, well, why don't you take a guy? But right now there aren't that many like premier edge players in the NFL who are on rookie contracts either. Like there aren't any players right now who you're like, oh, I'm building around that guy. Like, I, it, you know, right. Jalen Phillips, like there's like not a lot that are like right now producing at that level. Yeah, I don't want to tell you guys out of strategies, but like, I mean, that's what I thought with the edge rushers is like, all right, I'm going to go get a young guy who's kind of unproven at like six or something and be like, all right, let me get a Will Anderson or a Tyreek Wilson, you know, later on, just because, mm -hmm. yeah, it does get old and paid very quickly at edge rusher up, up top. Yeah, but a defense, I mean, this is the interesting thing, because I'm the one that wrote the whole pass rush versus coverage thing. And it's like, it's about units, though, like you really do need to get a premier pass rusher at the same time or before you go up, you get your secondary. It's like one pass rusher and then like five players in the secondary is how I would order it. And it's hard because like as the chief show with Frank Clark, if you miss, it's horrible, right? So like that there, there's some, and the cool thing about edge is that mathematically it's, it's pretty solved, right? Like we know we can tell, with, you know, fair, fairly big certainty how good, you know, who the good guys are. And, and so you really, which you, if you perturb that as slightly and you miss, it can be really bad for your defense, I think. Like the Chiefs, although they won two Super Bowls at Clark, so who knows. Okay, looks like I'm up. Um, yeah, and I think it's interesting. I went with, I got lucky. I got an edge player first. Like we said, I think there is truly um, a dearth of young edge players. And there's, you know, there's a bunch of wide receivers so I'm, I'm trying to decide. I feel like I'm in my trade down range if I was playing a fantasy football draft right now where I like so many options. Um, but I think I, I think I'll go one one pick I'm sure of is I think I'm going to go with Patrick Sertan. Um, I think the only other cornerback that I was putting with sauce in like I would pick in the first in, in the early side of this draft. Um, I think he's exceptional. I think he can do so many things for a defense. He has great size. He moves well. I think he's, I've seen him lock down like receivers um, like Devontae Adams and his during his best years. Uh, I think, yeah. So I just think Patrick Strand is great. I think he has three years left or at least two years left for cost control. Um, and I'm excited to see him uh, continue to grow. Not bad. Like it. I think that's, uh, I think that's solid. I think uh, you're definitely going defense forward. So I'm interested to see how you get what you do with the offensive board as things go down there. But uh, it's really hard to argue with those two 
at, at one and six there. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty solid, pretty solid start for you. Yeah. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the offense and I'm going to go, I think again, for another position where I think that they're, I'm going more out of scarcity than necessarily pure talent with other players on the board. And that's going to be Penny Sewell. So I think he is um, crazy young. Uh, I think I get like at least two years of cost control with him as well. Um, one more year than the remaining tackles on the board that, uh, and he came into the league super, super young. I think his development's going to be crazy. I don't think he's as good as Wirfs or some of the other tackles maybe right now. But again, this five-year um, horizon makes me confident that I think he's going to be an elite player by the end of it. And we're going to have a really good player. Very valuable deal. I think that's a really good pick, especially when you talk about young tackles, right? We see, you know, if a guy comes out their first year out of college at the tackle position and they're good, that's usually a great sign, right? Because tackles take on average, like at least a year to develop. So if a guy comes out and is immediately good and then like in year two is very good, um, then I, I just think that that is completely justifiable because, you know, tackles can play a pretty extended amount of time. So you're probably going to get the full five years out of the guy. The uncertainty is already gone. The player development's on the right track. I mean, that's the, these, these are all great indications, I think. Yeah, I think the wokest part of this draft so far is that there have been two tackles and they've both been right tackles. That's kind of cool. Like, that kind of shows that, like, there's, you know, there is certainly a difference, but I think that these two guys are, you know, like, transcend that. Um, despite this, I am going to go left tackle here, and it's between two guys. Andrew Thomas, who's the fourth overall pick in the 2020 pandemic draft, or Christian Derrishaw, who is the 24th pick, if I recall correctly, in the 2021 draft. The, I'm going to go through, my thought experiment is that, okay, Thomas has played the league a little longer. He has been more durable. Derrishaw has one more year of team control, but has dealt with like concussions and hernias and had problems with, you know, I, I watch Christian Derrishaw and I see Trent Williams. You know, Andrew Thomas is maybe a little bit less athletic-y, but every bit as as solid. Um, so I think I am gonna I, at the at the to not go for two Vikings. I'm gonna go with with Andrew Thomas tackle New York Giants. Double Viking does not cash. Not yet. Although they just cut Dalvin Cook, so that one's off the board. <laughs> you can't take you can't take Dalvin Cook as a as a second Viking there. Um, Thomas was a good pick. Uh, that was honestly the one I had penciled in. So I, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to totally cheat and uh, talk about, uh, you know, another area in our lives, Eric, where um, margins might be slim and decision-making certainly, certainly matters. Uh, if you are in need of some grooming uh, materials in, sort, in, in need of any kind of male grooming accessories, guidance, um, you have to check out Manscaped. They have all the tools you need, all of the um, highest tech, you know, up-to-date technology. They've done multiple iterations of their products. Um, a great gift, a great gift for yourself. And if you want to save a couple dollars and get the highest tech in, uh, in uh, grooming, you want to check out manscaped.com. Use code SUMER, S-U-M-E-R, to get a little bit of a discount there. Tell them that we, uh, tell them that we sent you and uh, get yourself taken care of over there at uh, manscaped.com using code SUMER. How's that? How's that? How's that? Overall good? pick in the Manscaped draft. Is it the weed whacker for the oldies like me and the nose and the ear hairs, or is it, I think the, just, is it the man lawnmower 4.0? Like, which one is the number one pick? I think I think uh, value over replacement uh, utensil is utensil the right word there? Is got to be the, the 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 weed whacker for the nose and for the uh, yeah, just getting everything that you need up there. Um, hey, look, man, you gotta William, you gotta um, you know you gotta maintain this somehow. So. Uh, certainly check out the suite that they have over there and let's, uh, let's keep drafting. Yeah. How about that? That's just great. Um, I am going to go Garrett Wilson here. I know I'm going double jets, uh, but I don't know how uh, I get this far on the board. I think that, no, I'm lying. I'm looking at the board. I'm going CD lamb, not Garrett Wilson. I'm taking CD oh, lamb. Whoa. Uh, Are there take here. back? Are there take backs in the draft? I didn't write. I didn't write it down. I didn't lift my finger off the chessboard. Oh, I was just contemplating yeah. a move. I had, to do, uh, I had to do the manscape read. I was a little, little sidetracked. Wow, talk about close shaves. Use code <laughs> Sumer. <laughs> yeah, uh, gonna go CD Lamb. Still feel like I got my elite wide receiver there with some options to get him some 
uh, guys down there feel uh, or some support later on. Um, I feel I feel good about him. Uh, you know, being being young, having a lot of control, um, and uh, I, I think that he's gotten better um, year over year. And I like his downfield ability. I think it's potentially underrated. So I like uh, I like CD Lamb here. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's a I I had so much money on CD Lamb last year that uh, like I was just in and then I you know they they needed to get him a number two receiver. Um, I think with Brandon Cooks there this year, I think we'll start to see his brilliance a little bit more. Um, but he did a lot last year as Dallas is really only guy. You know they they wanted Dalton Schultz to be a thing. He wasn't a thing, so I I, I like that pick um, a, a lot, Parker. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's one of the 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 best wide receivers left on the board. Um, as as much as I know, you know, we have people in the comments uh, wondering how in the heck Garrett Wilson is still on the board, but but here we are. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to again pass over Garrett Wilson. Um, <laughs> No, not because I don't think he's a fantastic player. Uh, I just, if I did an all wide receiver draft, that'd probably be a bit much. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to go reach back to the inside and I'm going to go Dexter Lawrence here. Ooh, spicy. Go Dexter Lawrence to, to build around. Um, and, and I know, I know the defensive tackle is not a position that, uh, gets as much analytics love as edge. Uh, my justification here is that defensive tackles, A, play for a long time. B, the certainty is already there. Uh, and I think that if I have to, if I have to generate pressure, I need to do it both inside and out because I have to assume that my coverage unit is going to be average because um, I'm not going to be able to build, build an entire coverage unit this draft. Yeah, I think, I mean, I wouldn't say, as I personally and numbers I've seen, I wouldn't say I undervalue or I view defensive line as necessarily a lot less valuable than, uh, sorry, interior defensive line than ex than out than on the outside. But you know, one of the problems is that like all the interior defensive linemen, they're all about to get paid, right? We're just like waiting. Right. Um, and I think Dexter Lords, I guess, technically hasn't been paid yet this offseason, but he's going to. Um, and I think like you know we're gonna see a lot of these contracts fall, and that that's like the only reason I have them all so much lower than. Um, I wouldn't take them here. Well, you had the year where Christian Barmore was the first interior lineman taken. He was taken in round two. So, like, the years where you have, like, none of the players taken in round one, they, they, it kind of provides that, like, that gap of players. But all the things Sean said are correct. Like, once a guy gets to a certain age, they play for a long time. And, you know, I think one of the hidden values of defensive line play is obviously what they do to the coverage. Um, you know, they allow you to play the too high stuff. And we've even seen it, like, I think on the other side where if teams thought they could, like Cleveland or, or, or Los Angeles, where they, like, want to play the too high stuff, but they don't have the interior line to do it or the linebackers to do it, and they just get run over, it, it's, it's, they're, they're very good players to sort of keep that uh, from happening as well. So that, that's, to me, um, you know, a, 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 a good thing is, as far as getting, getting one of those players in there. But to your point, like, all those players are about to get paid and, and paid a lot of money because of Aaron Donald. Uh, and, and trying to at least get up to a certain percentage of his contract. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, it it makes it tough to uh, you know it makes it tough to to plan around and and see like exactly you know who you're going to pick because like there's a lot of good players still left on the board, right? Like so, like Nick Bosa is still on the board, but Nick Bosa is going to get paid like thirty million dollars a year. And so, um, you know, if, if Jamar Chase is pending a, you know, pending a contract and um, basically if I pick all my guys to be pending a contract at the same time, it's like, we're, we're, we're basically going Rams mode here. Right. Where it's like, we're, we're just going to try and win a Super Bowl in the next two year and two years. And when, when the, when the bill comes, you know, the hell with it. Which makes sense. You know, they did win a Super Bowl, but yeah, that it, right. it Flex, really Flex, Flex, it's pretty Flex, desperate, Flex, you know. Uh, Sean, who's your who's your next pick here at the turn? So you did Dexter Lawrence, and then I I yeah. So I haven't I haven't picked him yet, and and I'm I'm waffling because originally I was going to say Dexter Lawrence and then Nick Bosa, but he's so damn expensive. 
uh, are going to be so damn expensive because like, you know, you look at, uh, you look at Nick, you really only get this year and then you have to extend them during this year. So not a lot of, uh, not a lot of control left. Uh, Quinnen Williams is, is pending a contract. Um, you know, I, I think I'm going to have to do something a little crazy here. I'm going to go cheap. I'm going to go, I'm going to go club control and I'm going to rely the fact on the fact that an NFL team and professional evaluators paid a buttload to trade up for this guy. I'm exactly. going to say, here we go. <laughs> Will Anderson here. Will Anderson Jr. Nice. Nice. Um, wow. Even if he's not great, he's cheap as hell. <laughs> oh, there's not even that. He's only some like I mean he's still a third overall pick right or like right. really high so he's still like he's still kind of expensive. Yeah, he's what what would he be like 10 12 million a year I think right yeah. now so it's not. Right. But but you don't have to factor in the trade costs, right? So like that's right. you know that's a thing yeah. like you don't have to drag that around with you. Um okay. I'm going to take I'm going to take No, no, you're up. No, you're up now Parker, right? I'm up, but I'm taking Garrett Wilson. I thought I was going to have a Solomon moment where I had to cut the baby in half, but I get to keep both halves of the baby, take CD and take Garrett Wilson. I'm shocked he fell this low. I kind of thought I had made a mistake taking CD. Lamb, love that I have Garrett Wilson. Feeling very good about my team right now, uh, rounding out that kind of one-two punch for wide receivers there. Two super productive guys, two guys that you have to have attention on. I'm going to raise up the floor of my average, you know, guys around them. And I've got elite pass protection with uh, Tristan Wirfs so I can allow them to get downfield uh, and get open and make plays happen. Um, yeah. Uh, awesome. So glad that I got him here around four. For what it's worth, I also thought you made a mistake with CD. But now that you got Garrett Wilson, <laughs> I think, like, you swap both those pigs. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much on board. All's well that ends well, right? <laughs> yeah. Results um, over process, I've often said. <laughs> Okay, this one, I'm going to go with an old, an old-ish. Uh, by the way, Parker, great Bible reference. Um, love that. Every time you bring one out of the show. Um, I'm going to go with an old. He's not that expensive. He has a $3 million cap hit this year, 27, 21, and then three and a half. You'll probably cut that up. But in the secondary, a weak link system, you are to find five players for whom every – for whom their probability of executing their assignment is the same. And so I want a player who I can give such a difficult assignment to that he's going to have an equal chance of, of executing it as the worst like outside corner there is. And for that reason, I'm going with the Miami Dolphins corner, Jalen Ramsey, because I can do a lot of stuff with Jalen Ramsey in that defense. And I, I tweeted this out. People got mad. I was a little hyperbolic. But I think <laughs> Jalen Ramsey's floor in the second half of his career is what Charles Woodson was to the package. And so if I have to play him at safety, if I have to play him in nickel, if I have to play him blitzing, all that stuff, I think he'll be fine. If he stays spry and can play outside too, amazing. There's just a lot of ways to win with me, you know, for me with this pick. And so I, I've always preferred the Marlon Humphrey types, the Jalen Ramsey types. And so I'm taking Jalen Ramsey here. I've seen the stun of everybody. Shot. Yeah, I mean it's he's just old or like relatively, <laughs> right? He's only 28. <laughs> yeah. The, the big thing yeah. is like the big thing to me is like how's this transition to safety gonna be, right? Because 28, the quick twitch is going to be gone very soon. Um, and, and so he could still be productive, but then how, how is he productive? You know, how well is he going to transition into that nickel role or into that safety role? Um, so I, I think this one, this is an intriguing one. This is a spicy one. It, it depends on your, it depends on your defensive coordinator too, though. Right. Like, you know, you see a lot of teams will invest in a, in a premier corner and then they'll put them on an Island and they'll just get smoked. And so it's, it's, to your point, you gotta you gotta design the entire defense about having, you know, the probability of success spread evenly across it. That's that's huge. So hopefully you have a good DC. If not, well, <laughs> I feel like he's a better vert. Like at the worst, he's better than Derwin James. Stays healthy all the time. Does all the stuff Derwin James can do, 
and also can play outside corner. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and I, I, I like the, um, yeah, I like the kind of raising the floor, taking the pressure off other guys because he's so versatile and could potentially like take the, make it a little easier for other guys in your defense. Um, it feels like Udit, it feels like I just saw Udit um, rub his hands together, kind of like um, Flo Rida in one of his videos, you know, right. looking around the club or something. Udit, who, do, who are you having round four that you so clearly are happy fell to you here? Well, I'm really excited. I think. My plan coming to this draft, which was the wide receiver group is really deep, so don't pick wide receiver early. As I think it's made me pretty happy. Um, I think I have so many options here, but I do got to take that uh, take some. I think the first wide receiver I'm going to take, which maybe is a little bit of an edgy pick, is uh, Chris Olave. I think he's okay. Uh, I think a lot of his underlying metrics are really incredible. I think he's in a great quarterbacking situation, and I think he's going to. I, I'm like predicting a breakout here. I think he's gonna be really, really valuable. Um, and I think he, I think Garrett Wilson is a better pick because he's definitely more proven a little bit than Olave. But I think they're gonna be in 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 one or two years' time. We're gonna consider them very similar. That that's my kind of prediction. Olave higher yards per route run than Garrett Wilson for what it's worth. Um, just just barely. But so that's just because of TCU legend Andy Dalton Parker. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, the the great thing about this draft is we assumed average quarterback going in is that Chris Olave goes from a situation where he doesn't have a good quarterback <laughs> into yet another situation where he doesn't have a good quarterback. So. I, look, this Andy Dalton slander won't stand. He's a nice guy, all right? He's made a lot of money in the NFL. Nice and then over. my other pick, which will probably also be another wide receiver, I think will be Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, I think, as Ted said, I'm restoring the roar uh, accidentally. I think everyone else is selling the Lions players. I think he's a young wide receiver. Um, he was like a fifth-round pick or something really low, so his contract for the last two years is dirt cheap. Um and I'm really excited to have him and extend him at probably a low amount as well and be happy. I like it. Anything up the receiving core. Both good picks. Yes. I wanted Amon Ross and Brown. I wanted to restore the roar, uh, but I, I couldn't. So um, I'm, I'm scrambling a little bit here. I think I have who I want, though. I'm going to go with another player to rush the passer. A little bit of a surprise here, but he has two more years of team control. Played, I, you were probably there when the, you drafted him, Sean. Jalen Phillips, Miami Dolphins. Uh, that was yeah. So that was right before I joined the team. I joined the team right after right after the draft. But I I love that pick. Phillips is a monster. Seventy seven total pressures last year. Um, you know, double the year before as a rookie. I'm not sure why the Dolphins traded for Bradley Chubb other than like just desperation, but you know, Phillips, Phillips to me was more than good enough to sort of Phillips and Wilkins are good enough players on the defensive line to sort of ride with, but uh, I think he's going to be a good ball player. So. Yeah, I would have taken Phillips if I hadn't taken Micah. I think he's got great value. I think he's underappreciated around the league. Um, I think there's a chance that, you know, we'll hear his name more and more um, in the next year or two. As a defense, as a defense ascends. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, hard to hard to argue with. I feel like here at the end we get a little bit position. It's like depends on who you've taken in terms of like objective value. Because what like right. after round three, there's a pretty big fall off uh, here. That being said, I do feel like I need to advertise the fact that I did not plan to go this jets heavy. This was not my, um, this was not my plan, but I feel like Quentin Williams is still sitting there and you're going to have to pay for him, but money's not real. And I've got a lot of guys that are cheap and under control. Uh, I need some run stopping uh, and kind of a disruptor on the defensive line. I'm going to go Quentin Williams uh, defensive tackle, New York jets here with my fifth pick. I like it. I mean, I, I very went very nearly went Quentin Williams, uh, you know, our, our last go around, I think having someone who can just really control the, the center of the offensive line is so valuable. And, you know, edge rushers get a lot of, a lot of attention, but um, there's, there's just nothing better than, than a strong interior. Like I, I just think back and, and Uda can probably commiserate for this, like being a Seahawks fan and like watching Aaron Donald in his prime. And it's like, you could, you could like, you could literally line up Eric at edge and they would get home because like, you're going to put four dudes on Aaron Donald to stop him and God help you. You still couldn't do it. 
So that's actually my my last pick was going to be Eric as a as an edge rusher. So (laughs) (laughs) I I pick myself every single day for not being like not deciding to be an edge rusher. I feel like I could have been a better edge rusher than tight end, but I I wanted to play offense like an idiot. So you're just you're hitting at all of my insecurities here, but that's okay. I'm sorry, I, I did not. I, I didn't mean to. Um, <laughs> uh, Sean, you got two here on the turn at the uh, at the end of uh, to to end your draft. Who who are you going with? Uh, two on the turn to end my draft. Gosh, I I don't mess am, up. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. No pressure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lean back on offense a little bit, and we haven't we haven't talked about this position yet, but I think it's important. And I've seen this guy excel when he's had little to no wide receiver support. And so I'm, I'm going to make a homer pick here. I'm going Mark Andrews. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Um, because I just, I think that Mark Andrews has all of the key components of a, you know, what you want in a franchise tag and that he blocks really well. That is receiving is, you know, he's a very good receiver. Um, and so there, there we go. There's the first lower value position. Yeah. Um, but but I think when you have a tight end that can both block and ca- pa- uh, catch passes, that there's there's just there is a lot more value that's that's not necessarily captured um, by by a lot of our metrics. So yeah, Rose well, it's, it's captured by the metrics, right? Like I think that this is where like the let, let's get our analysis hats on here, right? Like. The Mark Andrews is incredibly valuable on the field. He makes a lot. Like when I was doing PFF War, he was like 0.5 wins or 0.7 wins, depending upon the season. Like that's an extremely valuable non-quarterback. I guess the issue becomes like, and there is like many years, there's like Kelsey, Andrews, Kittle, and like a huge drop off. And then the question I have, Sean, is like, because I'll, I'll bring this to Kittle, because I think Kittle is an yeah. easier explanation. If your offense depends so much on that player, Derwin James, too, like kind of that kind of guy, like if your offense de- or defense depends so much on that pivot of a player who gets hurt or whose effectiveness is dependent on like, like Mark Andrews fell off last year in the second half of the year after Lamar got hurt, was starting to be ineffective. And I guess my question is like, can't like, is that a good thing? Like, do you deal with the variance? The Niners very clearly want to deal with the variance, right? The right. years that Kittle gets hurt, they suck, right? They've won, they've gone to the NFC title game or or lost ten or more games every year this decade except for one. So that that's how they want to ride. And like, I don't mind Andrews that way. It's just that the market clearly doesn't value that position, and it's like. Can you accept like how much can you, of Mark Andrews, including injury risk, can you access at fifty percent of the cost in the, in the open market? Is a, is a question. Yeah, so I think with tight ends that you see you see a lot of scarcity at the very top. To your point, like I think beyond probably Kittle, Kelsey, and Andrews, there's there's a pretty big drop off um, of guys who can who can play the entire position. And so part of my pick was based off of scarcity. I think so George Kittle's injury history scared me off a little bit. Uh, just he's gotten hurt a little bit too much. Um, and I think Andrew's drop in production last year had a lot more to do with what was going on in Baltimore, not necessarily him specifically, uh, because that entire that entire offense was built around the Lamar Jackson to uh, uh to um Tyler Hundley, Utah Ledge. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean they they built the they built the entire train out of uh Lamar Jackson. Oh, Lamar, well, and if we're if we're being consistent with like how we're building teams here, you have Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle. I think Mark Andrews is gonna be a little bit more valuable with that kind of like over the top pressure on the defense. I think getting our getting our big boy in there and 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 making him a gadget player is a lot more accessible uh with, with Chase and Waddle there for sure. Yeah, um, and, and it's it's kind of just you know, it, I was thinking about how the the Dolphins roster was, was constructed, and it's like, well, what if you like took Gasicki and you replaced him with one of the top three best tight ends in the league? Like, how devastating would that offense be? 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's hear your second pick. I almost cut us off there for a second because I thought we're spending too much time on Mark Andrews. And then I thought, you know what? This is our podcast. We can talk about Mark we Andrews for as long as we want. We want. Yep. But let's go, let's go to your second pick here. Uh, and it can't be Mark Andrews again. <laughs> no, it can't be Mark Andrews again. Okay, so I've gone, I've, I've gone interior pressure. I've gone edge pressure. I've spent a lot on the offense. Um, I think... I think I'm going to galaxy brain myself into no, – no, never mind. I'm, I don't want to get ranted at by Eric for two different positions in a row. I was thinking Fred that. Warner. Just to ask I was thinking Sean, Fred Warner just to be – Sean, sure. Roquan Smith is still on the board. That's, oh, gosh. <laughs> he's, a, he's a value at any price. Uh, Saquon? Christian McCaffrey. No, I, I, think, I think I am going to go Christian Darius out here. Good pick. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. Well, are we forgetting about Rayshon Slater? Like, do we think Darisaw is like? Uh, we are not. I, I okay, okay, okay. We, we are not. Uh, Sean might be. Um, also, a lot of these guys are like, oh, they've had injuries in the past. And some of them are different. Like, Slater was the bicep, right? And then Darisaw is a groin injury. So, like, I'm with the big man, you know, anything on lower body, I'm a little bit uh, – uh, a little bit wary, um, uh, which is why I, I, I like Manscaped and you should use the Manscaped uh, code for Sumer to get uh, 20% off, I think, is, is the deal. But uh, yeah, the below the leg injury makes me a little bit nervous for Darisaw there. And so I was going to go whichever one was left between Darisaw and Slater, but I think I had a very strong preference for, for Slater. So I'll lock my pick in and say I'm getting uh, Werfs and Slater on the edge to pass protect, and I have uh, CeeDee Lamb and Garrett Wilson. You guys can't stop me. Um, but, uh, but Sean, what, uh, yeah, I think, I think this was kind of like coin flip between those two. You go tackle late round. What do you like about Darisaw? I mean, so it, it gets back to a lot of the same stuff that, that Eric was talking about. Do you go with safety and consistency or do you go with upside? I, I am gambling this late in the draft that, that Darisaw's injury history is not going to bite me. Um, I probably would not have taken him earlier, but if his upside hits, like this is a guy who's going to be with your team for the next decade. Um, so I, I really think that the, the upside was just too much to ignore. Yeah, totally, totally get that. Um, and I think that's, I think that's smart. I think he's a good player and we're talking about shades of gray here at the, at the end of the draft at a premium position. Um, of course, uh, and I would feel very good about Christian Darisaw already having Tristan Wirfs. Um, but I'm glad that I have Slater here with three more years of control to slot in next to another experienced uh, tackle in or young, young, but has played a lot tackle in Tristan Wirfs to kind of anchor my pass protection here uh, down the down the stretch. Um, Eric or Udit comments on either of those tackles or Eric, do you want to get into your? Uh, no, your I, pick? I think Slater Slater had some injuries, obviously, but so did Darishaw. Um, But the the Chargers certainly missed him. I mean. The, the kind of stuff that Herbert had to go through last year was palpable. So uh, it does make sense to sort of have him there. Um, okay. Had, Sorry. Go ahead. I, was, I had Slater as like tackle, the third tackle I've taken, but I think we've have now exhausted like the whole young tackle list. So it's kind of good. We got through all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which is why I'm going to take a flyer on a guy who was not as productive last year as some of his peers, but was also a first-round wide receiver. Um, per Matt Harmon's reception perception, uh, was, was above average on every single route tech except for one. This is Washington Commander's wide receiver and former Penn State catching balls from Sean Clifford legend, Jahan Dotson. I like it. Wow. Uh, it's nice. funny that he turned into what they wanted Josh Doxson from TCU to be. Like it was, they just they just had the name a little bit wrong a couple years later, yeah. and then uh, and they get him in there, and he's uh, he's been so good for them. Um, that's a good pick, super versatile guy. And look, if you can catch passes from uh, Sean Clifford, you can catch passes from an average quarterback, right? Uh, I think that's uh, if you can dodge a wrench. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's very good. Very good upside. Very, I feel like that's a very solid high, high floor pick there with his athleticism and his versatility. So nice, nice pairing there with Justin Jefferson too. Uh, you know, Dotson, maybe not as versatile playing inside outside, but Jefferson certainly can play uh, line up multiple positions and put a lot of leverage pressure on the defenses. So a nice, uh, nice combo there. Um, many people are saying that Sean Clement is uh, better than, better than Sean Clifford. I don't agree with them, but, uh, yeah, but many yeah, people are saying not. that. 
Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Udit, Ooh, bring yeah, us home. You got yeah. the final pick of the draft. You started with Micah Parsons. You've, I feel like you've had a very solid draft here, but this is going to be not just the cherry, you know, the cherry on top. This has got to cement your, your winning this draft so far. Or are you going to be able to, to, oh. to capitalize here? Yeah, I think it's going to be easy. Um, and I, I didn't contribute to the Mark Andrews discussion very intentionally because I was trying to hide my pick and it fell to me beautifully. I'm taking Kyle Pitts. I think Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts nice. is as good as the tight ends that you guys talked about in that discussion. You conspicuously did not say the word Kyle Pitts and I could not contribute because I was scared of my mind. I think he has like the capability of a wide receiver. And I actually totally agree with some of the stuff you guys are saying that I think that the NFL is undervaluing the tight end position and due to this uh, franchise tag, like the salary cap or the top of the market is not moving up as fast as it should be. And all of those NFL teams know that, which is why they keep abusing and tagging their tight ends. And I'm going to do the same thing. If I'm a team owner and I get to uh, Kyle Pitts' end of contract, he's not getting like that arbitration. He's not becoming a wide receiver. I'm tagging him as a tight end. I'm keeping his contract low. I'm going to get a lot of surplus value. And I think he's going to round up my team. I have a, That's also the reason I did take Drake London last time, who I also think should have been taken over Jahan Dotson. But that's a, that, that, or that's T. Impressive. Higgins, like Jahan Dotson over T. Higgins. Devonta Smith hasn't been taken. I think Eric was just. Yeah. I don't know. There's some like insider. <laughs> no, Jahan Dotson was a favorite of mine coming out, and yes, I anchored to that. I wanted to be different. I, I don't think he's better than T. Higgins. I don't think he's better than Devonta Smith. But here's the thing: the Eagles aren't about to pay Devonta Smith either, and and the Bengals are not about to pay uh, T. Higgins because these costs they are. But, uh, Parker, the money is real in that way. Um, but but no, I mean, like that's a good pick. I, I certainly liked – it's funny because when the Falcons took pits, I I sort of threw caution to the wind. I liked the pick. I – you know, and I, and I know what the, you know, the mathematics around it are. I know, you know, taking Chase probably would have been better and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, and especially if, if, you, if he goes to a league average situation that would use him – rationally ish then right. i think that he he could be awesome so uh Uda, good job Uda, can i ask you one question at the very end the whole upside here is not that he is is not that he's a tight end it's that he's a cheap receiver right because like pass blocking yeah. metrics run blocking metrics he's not very good uh, in right. some way that affects your team composition because you still need a tight end to have some a versatile yeah. body for blocking Mar- mercedes lewis will be playing in five years i promise you i can get him there's <laughs> There's always a, like a decent high level run blocking tight end on the market. Like I will, that is an easy problem. Mercedes I, Lewis guys, Mercedes Lewis is so old that when I was playing tight end in college, I looked up to him. My, I can point, the only thing that scared me away from, from going Kyle Pitts and, and this is probably like Miami Dolphins PTSD, but I was just thinking of like, you know, you have Mike Kosicki, he can't block, he can only catch and like, that works for a little bit until the defense sees him on the field. And I was like, Oh, they're throwing. And that, that was the only thing that scared me away from it. And I think he can develop all that stuff. I think he has like, at least like some elements of the physical size, that stuff is harder to learn. We know the aging curves on run blocking and those aspects are lower. He's still really young. I think he has the most valuable stuff figured out. He's a cost controlled, great wide receiver. He can figure out the blocking. And I do agree with Alex Hussey also that I think Drake London is the, Drake London and Devonta Smith are the biggest, like, I think, people that we've left off. I think they're both in cost control deals, and they both have shown a lot of talent. Yeah, I agree. I, for me, the, the – yeah, you can, you, you can rip me for not taking London over Dotson, but I, I kind of – I've always liked the kind of wide receiver Dotson is more than the kind of wide receiver London is, but London is really good, and <laughs> he's, he certainly showed that as a rookie. Um, at, especially coming off of an injury at, at USC in, in the final year. So um, do we want to each rattle off what our drafts were? Let's or start if you with don't have it, I'm, Uda. Uda, you were first. I'm happy to read it if you don't have it up too. Yeah, if you, if you could read it because I did, wasn't writing it down. Go for it, Mark. Yeah, I, I, wrote, I wrote all of them down. So I can I can give us a real quick uh, recap. So Udit picking in the first slot went Micah Parsons, Pat Certain, Pene Swell, uh, Chris Olave, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and uh, Kyle Pitts. I can't believe you bungled all the names and didn't go Chris Olive or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you do. Um, Eric went uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, Miles Garrett, 
Andrew Thomas, Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Phillips, and Jahan Dotson. And uh, I, I think I think Jahan Dotson is the pick that's going to get the most Twitter friction, uh, Eric. So congrats on that one. Um, Eric Parker, my, myself went Tristan Worse, Sauce Gardner, C.D. Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Quinnen Williams, and Rashawn Slater. And Sean, picking with the turn, went uh, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Dexter Lawrence, Will Anderson Jr., Mark Anders and uh, Christian Derisaw as uh, as his last pick there. So I think there's clear streaks and weaknesses of all four teams. I think this was a fun exercise, and I think we went 55 whole dang minutes when we were trying to aim for a 45 minute cap, which is right. uh, that just an abundance single, of fun. That happens every single Monday podcast. We had 10 minutes of surplus fun. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say that above above the salary cap we gave ourselves, but. Um, and most of that yeah. was spent on Mark Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, we really appreciate Sean and Udit coming on the show. Um, and I know this won't be the last time. We really appreciate you all for coming. Uh, if you are in the YouTube, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, help us help us grow the show. If you go to sumersports.com, by the way, you can sign up on the zone for uh, what will be our newsletter coming up soon, and as well as other content on that site we're preparing for the 2023 NFL season. Uh, go to your favorite podcast platform, uh, leave a review, we'll read it on air. Uh, tell somebody about the show so that when this thing blows up, you can say, I was there first. So for Sean Clement, for Udit Ranazaria, for Parker Plumbing, this has been Eric Eager. This has been episode 66 of the Sumer Sports Show. <laughs>